Hey, chiropractors, welcome to Modern Chiropractic Mastery with your host, Dr. Kevin Christie, where we discuss the latest in marketing, business, and professional growth with some of the leading experts in the industry. Hey, docs, welcome to another episode of Modern Chiropractic Mastery. This is your host, Dr. Kevin Christie, and today I am interviewing Dr. Clay Sankey, who is one of our coaching clients, and we're going to dive into the uh, capacity and ceiling of complexity topic. And he, he shares his story of going from uh, himself in a, in a front desk in a nice practice uh, to now having a team and how he did that by uh, kind of changing a couple things as far as the, the time he spent with patient, uh, hiring a CA, and some of the things and thoughts that we worked through to, to really break through that ceiling of complexity that he had and was busy, but um, definitely uh, needed more profit margin, but also wanted to maintain a very high level of uh, patient-centered care that he has in his practice. He had before and he has now, and you'll hear his story of how he was able to uh, to do that by just tweaking a few things and looking at it through a different lens. And it's really been a remarkable couple years uh, that he's had in practice, and it's been excited to be a part of that journey. Uh, before we dive into that, I just got back from Parker Vegas 2024. What a what a great event. It it truly was, and it's not hyperbole. Uh, I'm not someone that kind of rah-rah and, and gets all overly excited about things, but it just was a really good event all the way from the, um, the people there, the speakers, the exhibitors, the dinners we had, the conversations, the, the type of guests that were there. It just was amazing. Uh, we had a really good time. We had a fun, Jay Greenson and I had a salon dinner on, on Friday night, which was uh, essentially, you can, you can kind of look that up, but historically people would have these dinners at their houses in their, you know, in a salon type of uh, atmosphere, not a hair salon, uh, but it's conversation. We kind of select, uh, p- we picked about eight of us, Jay and I, and then he had three guests and I had three guests and we set a topic around really finding the congruency between associate and practice owner? Um, How do we get the practice owner to thrive more, to be able to hire more associates, to be able to pay certain levels? What are, there's a disconnect happening there for sure. And what are some of the ideas and trends and thoughts around that? Um, Really enjoyed the conversation. We didn't solve the world's problem, but I definitely left that conversation um, with a lot of ideas and things that I think we can do uh, to bridge that gap between practice owner and associate and, and making it better, especially in the evidence-based world. And it was really enjoyable. But I just highly, highly recommend you attending Parker Vegas next year. It's going to be February 20th through 22nd in 2025. Uh, I just put it on your calendar now. It's just well worth it. It's, it's, it's definitely, uh, there's a return on the investment of getting out there. And so make that happen. All right, without further ado, here is my interview with Dr. Clay Sankey. All right, welcome to the show, Clay. I'm really excited to have you on. I got, I've gotten to know you over the last few years or so, but uh, before we dive into today's topic, tell our audience a little bit about yourself personally and professionally, and then we'll dive into it. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Kevin. This is great to be on the other side of things. Uh, like I've told you, I've been listening to your podcast for a while now, so this is great to uh, great to share some insight. Hopefully, people can gain something from what I have to say. So um, yeah, my background from an athletic standpoint is in running and it was my first running injury that brought me to a chiropractor for the first time. Uh, freshman in high school was sent to a chiropractor and it's funny, I remember that first visit, I was laying on the treatment table and he had his anatomy poster on the wall with everything labeled. And I, I remember looking at it and saying, did you have to memorize all of that? And he said, yeah, yeah. And there's way more than that. And I told him point blank. I said, well, I'm never going to do that. So I think I sealed my fate there and then. But, um, you know, I, throughout high school, I, I had gone to chiropractors for you know issues with you know running related injuries and some general maintenance stuff. So it was that exposure to the field, plus just a natural interest in health and human performance that led me into wanting to become a chiropractor. So um, 
went on to, to run in college. And then after college, went to Logan University for chiropractic school. The, Har um, the Harvard, did, the Harvard of chiropractic schools. That's what they say. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And, uh, um, so I went to Logan and spent a, you know, had a great education there, really, really enjoyed my time there, but did a ton of hours of extracurricular work as well in the, the movement related realm, dry needling, soft tissue work, stuff like that. Uh, 2016, graduated chiropractic school, moved back to uh, my hometown of Charlotte, North Carolina, where I now have three kids, uh, practice, opened up my practice in 2016 as well. So three kids, practice dog and very little spare time. Yeah, absolutely. You're in the thick of it for sure. Uh, yeah. So obviously Charlotte's probably changed now compared to when you grew up there. It has. It's a really growing city. It's a great city to be in, very young population, um, very, uh, very active population as well, which benefits practice like mine. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so let's, let's dive into that. Give us a little bit of a you know, 30,000 foot overview of your practice and some of the nuts and bolts of it. Yeah, so um, we're a very movement-based chiropractic practice. Um, we have two providers, a CA and a front desk, uh, three treatment rooms and a gym in the back. So um, we're, we're very, you know, uh, adjustment heavy MPI style, soft tissue work. We do dry needling, laser therapy, different modalities. And then um, we uh, put a heavy emphasis on movement as well. And um we, I have a niche with runners, but also uh, a big passion uh, on working with TMJ issues, uh, pregnancy, postpartum, and then your general neck, back pain, and sports injuries. Yeah, and you got a nice little practice going there. You also got the um, the treadmill. Uh, what's the name of the treadmill again? I'm blanking. Yeah, we have an Ultra G anti gravity yeah. treadmill, which is uh, a pretty cool thing to have, especially when you work with a lot of runners. And there's really only a couple others in the whole city of Charlotte. So nice little perk. It is. It is. It's uh, definitely got a little bit of a wow factor to it, which is which is pretty cool. Let's take a break from today's episode and announce our first sponsor. This is going to be Propel Marketing and Design. I've known Darcy Sullivan for years. We've worked hand in hand on my websites. I don't trust anybody else uh, to do this search engine optimization. She does a great job. There's there's so much to it. A lot of a lot of the lingo and the words are beyond my uh, comprehension, but it's just amazing work that she does. And if you're really going to get results with Google, you have to make sure your website is SEO optimized. And I really don't want you doing it yourself as a chiropractor. So I, you, you just have to have this type of stuff done. And if you're looking to get more organic online traffic that pulls in new patients, Propel Marketing and Design is currently offering chiropractors who listen to this podcast a free SEO website review. The free review will help you uncover methods that will improve your website and boost your search engine visibility. Head over to propelyourcompany.com slash chiropractor and schedule your free SEO website review. You won't regret it. She gets great results. Your website needs this. Your search results need this. Head on over there to propelyourcompany.com slash chiropractor to get your free SEO website review. Uh, so what, what's your future vision of your ideal practice? Yeah. So um, I don't know if I've ever been one that dreams of having multiple locations, but I do want to expand within um, it, within one building and start to bring, we just brought on an associate chiropractor, but I would like to have some other services within the clinic as well. Uh, we used to have massage therapy. I want to bring that back. Uh, that's a really uh, great benefit to us as chiropractors and to our patients as well. Uh, when you have a good symbiotic relationship with a massage therapist, um, physical therapy can be billed a little differently. And there's some benefits to having a physical therapist in the office as well. So I would ideally like um, a, uh, a good physical therapist in the office and, and really just expand our community reach uh, as well. So uh, be more involved with a lot of the the running groups in the city, a lot of the other fitness groups. And, um, you know, ultimately our goal is to help people move better and feel better. So if we can do that and continue to expand here, then it's a win-win. That's cool. Yeah. And, and it's been fascinating to see you grow. I think we've been working together for a little over two years or so now. And 
if I'm not wrong, I think it was just you in the front desk at the time. And you might've had some, some preceptors here and there. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. And are you still taking on preceptors? I think you've had one recently. We are. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's in the past in North Carolina has been in a, an observation only state for preceptors, which is a little limiting, unfortunately for the preceptor and for the practice. Um, but just this past fall, they, made a hard switch and said, nope, preceptors can do everything. So we had a preceptor that fell under that uh, new guideline and it really worked out well. He was a stud, um, helped the practice quite a bit. And it was a nice transition into then bringing on an associate because uh, yeah. it helped with the flow of the office and everything like that. So yeah, always love having preceptors come in. Um, we like that kind of uh, opportunity to teach and kind of give back Get, give something back to the profession as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, part of why, why I wanted to bring you on because, you know, you've gone from a team of just you in front desk to now you've got four and then plus preceptor. So you're building a, a, a team, you're going you know, to bring on massage at some point again. Uh, and it's been good to see that. And, and one of the things that we kind of had to work through was essentially a ceiling of complexity. Uh, you know, you were, your, your treatment hours were essentially being booked um, but there wasn't enough meat on the bone necessarily to to grow. And I think a lot of people run into that, uh, you know, and it's that hourly capacity issue that we we talk about. It's basically how many patients can be seen in an hour? What's your office visit average? What does that add up to? And, you know, it's got to be a healthy number so that you can build a team. And so take us back a little bit to, to that. Uh, how much time were you um, having to spend uh, with a patient and how many were you able to see in an hour when you kind of were at that ceiling of complexity? So, yeah, I'll, I'll take you back even maybe just a little bit further. So, yeah, I think when we come out of school, especially as movement-based physicians or, you know, this evidence-based crowd, we have this idea that we want to do something different. Uh, we want to separate ourselves from that traditional chiropractic model. We want to spend time with the patients. We want to do the extensive rehab, the good adjustment, the good soft tissue work. And, um, and that's super admirable. Um, but spending a lot of time doing that rehab, uh, oftentimes does not work under the insurance model. It can work under certain cash models possibly. But uh, so starting off, you know, I was spending a good amount of time with patients. It was, you know, 30 minutes on returning visit appointments, if not a little bit longer, because I, because I had the time, but got to a certain point where like, man, you know, the schedule is kind of filling up, but mm -hmm. you know, I need, I need to start bringing in some more revenue in order to expand and um, keep the practice afloat. And I had to have a conversation with myself. Look, I have to either see more people, which means, you know, less time with each individual person, or I need to charge more. And there's just not a lot of, there's not a lot of wiggle room within the insurance model to charge more. You, know, you can add more onto your self-pay services or whatever, but will that move the needle? I, you know, I'm not sure. Um, so I, I didn't want to sacrifice the good product that we had where we were, you know, um, spending good time with the patients. So I had conversations with some other friends and colleagues who employed really good athletic trainers, really good personal trainers as a CA uh, to do their rehab. So it was just before I started working with you and kind of the, one of the reasons why I started working with you was, look, I want to hire this good BA to start doing some of the rehab. I know you talk about the, our unique ability as chiropractors mm -hmm. and um, for, for us within our team, our unique ability, the only thing that is unique to us is we can diagnose and we can adjust and in mm -hmm. North Carolina, we can needle. Um, so those other things we can outsource if we're spending a lot of time doing it. So that's what we did. We hired a good CA and um, we're, we were able to I was able to shorten the amount of time that I spent with patients and um, still see, you know, still see a good amount of patients per week. Yeah. And it wasn't like you went from 30 minutes to five minutes with patients, you know, you went down, you're able to see, you know, three in an hour instead of two and, 
right. and ultimately bring in the same revenue, uh, be able to hire that that person paid for themselves essentially. And and a couple of things I do want to mention, you know, you're in North Carolina, which insurance actually reimburses fairly well compared to other states, and it still can be hard to um, spend. 30 to 60 minutes with a patient under good insurance model. Uh, and so a lot of people are in states where the insurance is really bad and it makes it even harder. Um, the second thing I want to just, it's a little bit of a soapbox that I'm going to hop on for a second, then I'll hop back off of it and we'll get on it. Um, you know, I've been running some polls in different Facebook groups, trying to get a beat on the profession as far as young docs coming out and looking for good associateship positions that pay fair. And I know there's a lot of associates that are, uh, frustrated with the job market out there and what they can get compensated from a good evidence-based sports chiropractic practice. You know, they, they get all these great certifications and trainings out of school. And as they get more specialized, which is great, um, they find that there's actually less and less jobs that are um, able to bring on their skill set. And then I, I kind of asked a question, a poll about uh, did you, did, not you, but did, you know, when you were first looking for a job, uh, just a general question poll that I had, were you looking for, you know, you picked the city or the specific region and then you tried finding a job because you, you wanted to go back home or a spouse or whatever, or did you just look for a great job and then you're willing to move to different areas of the country for that great job? And, you know, it's a little bit more people look for, they, they picked the city first. And so they're, then you're really kind of, kind of pigeonholed. Uh, in that regard. And so the, the, the concern I have is that if, uh, if not enough good evidence-based or sports chiros, however you want to label us, um, build good practices, like we're talking about how yours is being built, then it's going to feed the cycle of not enough good paying associate jobs for these specialized chiropractors, because too many of the chiropractors, um, that aren't figuring this out um, are not able to even to pay themselves well enough, um, let alone bring on another doctor. And so that's why this is important, not only for the, the doctor listening for their own practice, it's really important for uh, our side of the profession. And we've got an exciting times. So there's a lot of cool things happening. We just, you know, found out that university of Pittsburgh is going to get a chiropractic school. So that's exciting. Like there's a lot of positives but we have to get this figured out. And that's kind of that hourly capacity that's really getting good results um, and not um, kind of dying on the vine in, in doing so. So that's my my soapbox. That's why I kind of wanted to have you on because you're a prime example of someone that's uh, frankly, relatively new to the profession, right? 20, 2016 wasn't that long ago. Uh, you went through, um, you know, the, the pandemic in an early practice, which was probably not fun and you came out on the other side of it. So, uh, kudos to that for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, okay. that's definitely big picture, you know, and, um, it, it's good to look at it that way. Cause we often, um, you know, w worry about focusing too much on that hourly capacity because maybe, you know, a lot of us may, might not have gotten into this for the money. We got into it to want to help people, but if you don't have that revenue coming in and you're not smart about, the amount that you can make per hour or that hourly capacity, then you're not going to be able to help the people that you want to help. You're not going to be able to grow and expand and provide good associate positions for those uh, people coming out of school. So it's a really important discussion to have. It is. And it's also just for, you know, like I believe that a, a provider that's doing well, doesn't, you know, we're not talking about driving Lamborghinis. We're, we're like, you know, you feel good. You have some cash confidence. You're able to, you know, buy a house, you're able to do those things, um, put you in a better mindset to be even better as a leader in your practice for your patients, go into that treatment room with a little more peace of mind and a little more clarity on things. And you're not stressed out financially, which can eat away at your effectiveness uh, as a doctor. So um, I, I just wanted to touch on, on some of those ramifications uh, as we go forward. So let's, let's dive back in. Um, when you made this change and you 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 personally spend a little less time now the patient is obviously getting the same time in the office they're getting the same uh services rendered it's just being team it's, it's a team now um right now, at this point you're at a you know going back a couple of years when you made this change or a year and a half ago um it was a team of two now you're a team of three but 
did the quality of care or the patient outcomes go down at all when you made that change? No, I mean, I would almost argue that it's gone up because they can, you know, I'm 100% focused on the patient in the room and I'm not too worried about the clock because I know that they're going to go to my CA who's very capable at taking them through their rehab mm -hmm. and the CA then has time to take them through that rehab progress if necessary, regress if necessary, make lateral moves if we need to. And it's not just me, you know, worried that I'm late for the next person and, oh, we'll just get to it next time. So, and, you know, there was that thought early on that, oh, man, it's, it's not me doing the rehab. Will patients feel like it's a, it's a cheaper product because of that? I'd actually argue the opposite, that it has this air of professionalism that, okay, they're seeing me, the doctor, then they're going on to this really qualified and confident CA that can then take them through the rehab. So they're moving through this really great team and they've now developed a good relationship with someone else in the practice. And they're, you know, if she's not here, they're kind of bummed that, you know, she's not here and, um, you know, they've got their own banter going back and forth. So it's been a really good setup. I don't think it's, um, kind of taken away from the quality whatsoever. Yeah. You know, going back a little bit as far as, you know, they're not going to see me the whole time, definitely a little bit of an ego thing for us chiropractors sometimes. <laughs> right. It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, we can sure. have a problem with that. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and not to devalue the importance of, of rehab, but if you can really focus on the treatment side of things and, and feel good about that, that's uh, going to improve outcomes as, as well. And then, you know, obviously you got to train the CA well and have audits on how they're doing with queuing and rehab. That's, that's great. Let's take a short break from our episode and let me tell you about this awesome company I personally use in my clinic, and that is ChiroUp. ChiroUp isn't your average online platform. It's the brainchild of chiropractors, doctors Tim Bertelsman and Brandon Steele, and it has grown to a community of over 3,000 of the best chiropractors in the world. I've actually worked with these guys before, and let me tell you, they're the real deal. ChiroUp is a goldmine of protocols from over 120 conditions we deal with every day, all neatly packed into one online hub. Why does this matter? Because not only are you able to diagnose smarter and faster, but you can also get this information into the hands of your patients in just four clicks. And they're 100% backed by evidence. How cool is that? But here's what really got me hooked. ChiroUp is all about stepping up the game in chiropractic care. I'm all for that, and I know you are too, because you're listening to this podcast. Seriously, if you haven't checked them out yet, drop everything and head to chiroup.com forward slash Christy. That's C H I R O U P forward slash C H R I S T I E dot com. You'll be able to set up a free 14 day account with no payment information needed. Once you see what's in there and fall in love with it, use the code Christy 15 to save some cash. Start now and you'll thank me later. Trust me on this one. This code is valid for new subscribers only. But you also mentioned something I want to touch on, which was worried about being behind a little bit. Um, there was a, an interesting question or something posted in FTCA about what do you do if your patient's, you know, five minutes late or, or 10 minutes late? And there was a lot of people on there, like they literally have no wiggle room. And, and, and so it becomes a capacity issue there where if a patient's eight minutes late, they, they reschedule them or like, you know, it's, and you know, that you probably have a capacity issue there if you can't handle patients being a little bit late. Now, if they're 20 minutes late, that's a different animal potentially. But when you are a, a lone wolf, it's going to be a lot harder for sure. But when you have a team and you have a rehab CA, it's like, like it happens in our practice a fair amount where someone's late, but sometimes I'm late too. But, um, like we'll just start them with exercise if they fell out behind, right? We can, we can kind of work the schedule a little bit because I have someone that can do rehab with them or can at least start to hit the subjective note with them while I get to them. Or, you know, maybe I, I that patient that's five minutes late, I get to them real quick with treatment. And then that next patient, I like, like, okay, they need rehab. Let's get them. They're on time. Let's get them rehab then in the treatment room. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility and then from there, you can increase your capacities in that regard, and that can help out your practice as well. 
Yeah, it's been a huge, uh, it, it, that's taken a huge burden of stress off of our backs, having that ability to make those little changes. And you're exactly right. We can, if they're running behind, I can still get an adjustment in. I can still get a little bit of soft tissue work in. That does not take that much time. We may need to be a little quick on our conversations, but then they can spend a little bit more time on the rehab side, a little bit more with the modalities. And, you know, patients come in and they're late. They're usually like flustered typically. Mm -hmm. And if they see that now you're cool, calm, collected, you're not worried too much that they're late. It really puts them at ease. And uh, it's mm -hmm. been, been really nice for us. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so uh, love it. And now, did you have any patients complain at all when you made this change? No, mm -mm. Yeah. no we've, we haven't had anything, um, you know, uh, occasionally we'll have, you know, maybe the rehab exercise didn't go the right way, but that's, happened with me in charge of things too. So, sure. um, it, it's going to happen. I think it's just how you respond, mm -hmm. uh, to things not going well, um, is more important than, um, you know, how it was yeah. that happened in the first place. A lot of, a lot of chiropractors, uh, don't make changes in whether it's this type of change or others, because they're for, worried about what the patient's going to say. And it's amazing what you can do within reason as far as changes and them not complain. Right. I mean, I did the, I did the, the unthinkable and I stopped treating patients for a year and it, it, it was fine. <laughs> and so, yeah, it, even when can... we went, sorry, even when we went from a, a, like a 30 minute visit to a 20 minute visit and, you, you know, we start to make those visits a little bit more, uh, short and, uh, effective, um, you know, people where they're used to being scheduled on the half hour. Now they're scheduled on like the 10 minutes, yeah. you know, they may say like, you know, we may say, Oh, your next appointment's at, Nine ten, they may say, "Oh, that's weird," and that's it. You know, <laughs> there's nothing more. But you know, we have the CA, so they're still spending the same amount of time in the office, maybe even longer uh, because of it. So yeah, there's been no pushback. Yeah, and, and like you said, they're getting the same results. Um, and that's the thing that I think a lot of chiropractors fail to realize is that you know we're not in a time economy; we're in a results economy. And if someone can get the same results in quicker time, uh, you know, it's they like that. And I think that's the other thing some people. Uh, forget about as well. Let's take a short break for one of our great sponsors, TrackStat. It is a new type of software plugin for your EHR that combines patient communication, marketing, automation, and statistics with patient and employee tracking. Built by chiropractors for chiropractors, it shows your team what to focus on each day. See patient visit habits, missing information, unpaid bills, insurance collection visit average, and more. Great visibility of data so you can focus on filling your office with your best patients. When you can see what your staff and patients are doing or not doing and take action accordingly, your profits naturally grow. Take TrackStat for a test drive in your office with our free trial. Not a techie, no problem, we can help. To get started, on your free trial, visit trackstat.org and watch the demo. That is trackstat.org. Um, but give me a little bit of a overall uh, update of where you're at now. Like, what has this done for your practice? Uh, from that point, you did that change. You hired the CA. Give us what where you're at now. Well, I mean, the biggest thing that's done is it's allowed us to bring in some more revenue to then hire an associate, uh, which was really my ultimate goal. Um, so I can not only have that, you know, partnership of another provider being in the office, but then be able to um, take some of the the burden off my schedule, be able to take a little bit of um, you know, quote, paid time off, which is not the reason why you should hire an associate, but, uh, it is a benefit. Yep. So yeah, it allowed us to see more people, um, still provide the same high quality level of care, uh, and then bring more revenue into the practice. Yeah. And that's big. Right. And I think that's, you know, when you have a team, um, it's, it's awesome. And patients like to see a team and not to say, you know, like I, I, for a few years, I was a lone wolf early on when I opened my own practice. I was for maybe a year. I was in a partnership before that. And so things were fine, you know, but when you start getting, when people walk in, there's a good energy, there's three or four patients in there. You got some team members. It really adds to the, to the patient experience. And they're like, okay, this, you know, I'm in a, you know, a, a growing practice that is thriving. People like, it's just like the same thing with a restaurant. You know, if you go to that restaurant and there's no one in there and 
it's kind of like whatever. You're kind of like, oh, it's, you know, it's Friday night at seven o'clock. Why, why is this place slow? Uh, it's the same kind of feel. Uh, if you go to a chiropractic practice, you want a little bit of energy there. And again, not that a, a solo doc can't have that, but um, having a team around you is is going to um, improve a lot of things, I believe. Yeah. Yep. One hundred percent. And um, you know, what what are you excited about for the rest of the year? This is February twenty twenty four. What what's what are you excited for coming up this this year? Yeah, I'm really excited to just get my uh, associate's schedule starting to book up, uh, get him rolling. And then um, with with him here, start to free up some time to be more involved within the community. Uh, so that allows you know, me to be get out more. Uh, he can get out more. He has more of a specialty in CrossFit. And that's a, a niche that we haven't quite tapped into. Um, so I've got the runner side of things, the CrossFit side of things, and then um, just constantly work on educating the team as well. So, um, you know, RCA had a training process, but uh, it continues to this day. You know, we're always working on, um, you know, different exercises, progressions, regressions. Uh, you know, we, we have a, we're hosting a seminar here um, in May. So, uh, excited to bring the team to that, just continue to expand our knowledge and, uh, always trying to make this a better product uh, when people come through our door. It's cool to see that you're, you're starting to turn your place into a, um, a destination, which, which I like, there's someone not too far from you, Michael Nelson in South Carolina, mm -hmm. who, who we've worked with for some years now, and he's done the same thing. It's been cool to see some of the parallels there of, you know, hosting seminars and, and, and doing all that. It's, it's really cool. Um, have you had to, have you noticed any difference as far as having to provide a different level of leadership uh, in the practice now that you have people, you're building a team? What, what does that look like for you? Yeah. Man managing people is definitely a different, a different beast. Um, so yeah. Uh, before when it was just myself, it was pretty straightforward. Yep. Then you add a front desk and then you are used to things going a certain way and you try not to micromanage, uh, then you, you know, add someone else and, you know, same thing. And then you're adding another provider. So yeah, it, it, it takes a little bit to learn the ins and outs of that. Your group has helped tremendously. Um, you know, the book, uh, extreme ownership by mm -hmm. Jocko Willink. I constantly go back to that, uh, just because that's been really helpful um, in that that management standpoint. But um, as the team grows, those little meetings, those scheduled meetings become more and more important where you could kind of, you know, um, maybe slough them off or just do yeah. little one-offs at when it's just two of you. But when it's more people, those meetings are, are real important. And I'm good friends with uh, Keith Yoho, who you just had on uh, yeah. the podcast. And mm -hmm. hearing that episode on uh, the importance of the meetings and the extent at which they take their meetings is, is really eye-opening. We don't quite have a team like that, but it's still uh, motivation to make sure we've got everything in check and are following up on every little loose end. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's cool. And, you know, I, leadership's always interesting and, and it's a, it's a consistent improvement that you have to make over time. I, I heard a, uh, and it's important, obviously we know that I heard a interesting um, kind of synopsis of it. It was actually Bill Ackman on the Lex Friedman podcast, but he talked about, um, you know, you need a, a you need an A plus leader to be able to have a team members underneath. If you have a B leader, it's going to be really hard to have a team members. And so a lot of times you look at a practice and you look at the leader, the, the, say the chiropractic owner, and if they're a BC on, on leadership, it's going to be really hard for them to have team players that are A's like that usually doesn't make, make sense, right? It just doesn't happen that way. Um, so, you know, not that everybody has to be an A plus leader naturally, but you can definitely become a really good leader and get into that A category of leadership. So that way you have a team members and you have good culture and you have good patient experience and you have good clinical outcomes. It's important to continue to develop as a leader. So, so those of you that are kind of hitting that ceiling of complexity now, uh, hopefully you got out a lot out of this that, yeah, you can break through that. You might need some strategy and and ideas around that, but you can, and then, uh, things might change a little bit for you. Like you're going to have to start also working on your, on your leadership and what your leadership style is and, and keep on improving on that so that the team is cohesive and that, uh, you don't have cultural problems within 
the the practice. Yeah, and you know, I've seen that myself where you know, you just have sometimes you have weeks that you're just off. And if I carry that into the practice with me, um, I can I can see how like my team performs. It's like, yeah, you know, something something's off. And I think it's starting from the top. And yeah. then, you know, when I get myself into gear and make the the correct changes that I need to, then I see the performance come up uh, with the team and just the overall morale and the mood. So um, yeah, I mean, you're not going to be perfect all the time, but it, as long as you're, you're trying, you're working on good communication skills and everything like that, you know, it comes together. I think that's important. The communication, you got to talk to them too. It's like, I recently had a pretty extreme, uh, case of it a couple of months ago. Uh, one of my best friends had passed away and I found out that morning prior to coming to the office. And, and so I was obviously not in a good place. So I sat down and had a kind of impromptu meeting with them. It's like, look, I'm going to push through today and we're not going to cancel patients. Uh, I'm going to put on a good face when I get in the treatment rooms, but just know I'm, you know, dealing with some stuff. Cause I didn't want them. Cause in the past, I kind of would just, yeah, maybe as a guy, you know, I just kind of deal with things and not talk about it, but um, I would have just not talked about it. And then they were like, Oh, you know, they would have thought something was wrong or something like that. So if there's any, obviously that's an extreme example, but if there's anything that's just eaten at you that needs to be discussed, discuss it, communicate about it, get on the same page. Like I'm having a bad day, you know, my, my kid's sick or something, right? Like, I didn't get any sleep last night because I know Clay, you got a, a a newborn in the house. Um, you know, you didn't get any sleep. And so just let them know. I was like, yeah, it was a pretty rough night last night. So not in a bad mood. I just didn't get any sleep. So over communicate sometimes, right? Yeah, exactly. So cool. Is there anything I didn't ask you today? No, no, I think that pretty much covers it. I mean, this has been, you know, the past couple of years that we've been working through this process and continue to work on it. Um, and yeah, again, you and your group have been extremely helpful and uh, I'm real happy with where we're at and where we're going. Cool. It's been a pleasure and uh, looking forward to keep on working with you. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And if you want to make the shift from busy, broke, and broken to time-free and cash confident, or you just want to continue with the exponential growth, check us out at modernchiropracticmarketing.com. Look at the MCM Mastery tab, watch the short video on there, and check out what we are doing now for evidence-informed chiropractors. We are equal parts coaching and marketing done for you. Yes, you shoot some videos. We help you with campaign strategies and ideas and really become a thought leader in your community. You shoot those videos, you send them to us. We produce, edit, and brand them to you. Then we distribute them through all of your channels. We also take them and we turn it into one good blog per month. And every other month, we have Darcy Sullivan producing a robust blog with a topic that you pick from her database to help with your SEO. So we essentially become your content marketing agency to make sure your practice is always having ethical, elegant content marketing to help grow your practice. On the coaching side, we also help you with everything from marketing ideas to business, communications, finances, anything practice growth and really try to help prevent you from being stuck on that island. And we hold you accountable. We have a great group of doctors that are just doing amazing things. And we look forward to help you out to take that next step in your practice. So again, check us out at modernchiropracticmarketing.com and learn more.